Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today, folks, is new guitar day for me. Now, this is going to be a really long intro, okay? Because I've got a lot of details to tell you about the instrument I'm going to unveil. If you want to skip straight to the playing, please feel free to do so. I'll put a timestamp on screen now to where you can do that. So if you don't want to listen to my rambling and just get to the loud bit, that's no bother at all. Anyway, rewind about nine or 10 months. I made a video on this channel that I called my best of British guitar rig. So it was all of my favorite UK made guitar gear together. So I think I had my orange custom shop retro 50 head, Zilla cab, Celestian and Fane speakers, a Williams audio tone bender, my new tone strings, my favorite UK gear that I owned. But the slight elephant in the room in that video was that I didn't own a British made guitar. And I think in the end I used my Heritage 535 because it has the Monty's PAF pickups in there. Some of my favorite UK made booty humbuckers, but that was about as good as I could do. And a few of you in the comments were recommending me some UK guitar builders because over here, we don't really have many, if any, big guitar companies in the way that America has Gibson and Fender and Japan has Ibanez. We don't really have that. There are a few smaller companies like Crimson, Gordon Smith. Um, I know Burns used to make guitars in the UK back in the 60s. I don't even know if Burns are still going as a company, to be honest. But aside from that, we have small workshop luthiers making one-off bespoke instruments. And that's about all we've got. So I've been keeping an eye on eBay and Reverb, scouting things out, trying to find myself a UK made guitar that really appeals to me. And I had one prerequisite for it, which was basically I didn't want a clone of a classic American design. So I didn't want a T-style guitar or a Les Paul replica or anything like that. I wanted it to be a little bit left field and different and quirky. So I was keeping an eye out and I spotted a guitar on Reverb that I really liked, but it was A, a little bit more than I could afford, and B, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be too weird for me, because as regulars to this channel will know, I don't really exist outside of the classic designs of the 50s and the early 60s. I don't really go any further than that. So if I were to buy anything that differs from those guitars, it would have to be at least rooted in an old school philosophy for it to really appeal to me. And I wasn't sure whether this guitar would or wouldn't. So I was kind of kept coming back to it and I was emailing the seller, a very nice chap called James, and he was answering all my questions about it. And I was negotiating the price with him a little bit. And I was kind of honing in on trying to pull the trigger on it. And then I found out one key detail about the chap who built it. Now he doesn't build guitars anymore. I think the financial pressures of being a one man guitar builder were just too much and he couldn't support his family. So he had to take his career down a different route, sadly. But he lived and still does live in Bristol, my home city where I still live. So as soon as I found that out, I kind of knew I had to buy it. So I negotiated a really good price with the seller and I snagged it. So not only have I added a UK made guitar to my collection, I've added a Bristolian to my collection, which as a Bristol boy makes me very happy. So what is it? It's a very good question. It's certainly very different from the sort of thing I would usually go for, isn't it? Now, this is a guitar that was built in 2006 by a luthier called Nathan Shepard. Now, I'm guessing you won't have heard of Nathan. I hadn't heard of him either. But back when he was building guitars, he was incredibly talented. And the build quality of this instrument is absolutely astonishing. It has a volute underneath the nut to strengthen the headstock so it doesn't snap off like a Les Paul. And it's just an immaculately made instrument. It's super glossy. It's like a piece of furniture in a way. And the hardest thing when I was taking the photograph to kind of dot in over this intro was not having my big, horrible, greasy fingerprints all over the top because it shows them up you know, quite prominently. So I wanted it to look at its best, but I kept touching it and smearing it. But anyway. So in terms of the woods and the construction of this guitar then, the body is swamp ash, but it's a semi-hollow construction. So the middle is solid, 
sides are hollow. And it's not like a laminate construction like a Gibson thin line would be. It's basically like the construction of a Gibson, I think it's a 339, where it's a solid body guitar, but lots of the material is kind of scooped out to create resonant chambers inside the instrument. And the chap I bought off, he does somewhere have photographs of the insides of this guitar before the top went on. And I'm really hoping he can find those and send them over to me because I really want to see them. So it's a kind of semi-hollow guitar, but built out of a solid lump of swamp ash. Now, the it doesn't have a centre block as such running down the middle because it's a through neck design. You can kind of see the base of the neck there that's different to the bodywood. So it doesn't have a centre block, but it does have solid material running down the middle. So it's really, really nice to stain on it. And it doesn't feed back because of that. It doesn't have F holes, even though it's hollow. And it, you know, it just sounds amazing. Now, the neck wood is flamed maple, I think, with a walnut streak running down the middle. So it's kind of like a laminate construction of a neck. The top wood, the back wood, the front of the headstock and the fretboard is a wood called coca bolo, which I'll be honest, I'd never heard of. But I think it's like a tropical rainforest wood from a far off place. But one thing I've found out about Coca Bolo, having read about it, being the sad I am, is that it has kind of pale streaks running through the wood of the tree. And if you look around the kind of the top of the 12th fret here, you'll see it has a kind of lighter streak running through the fretboard, which to me just adds so much character to the instrument. It makes it look like a piece of wood rather than anything that's been over lacquered or anything. So I really, really like that. So some really sort of fancy woods in this, an amazing construction. And that's one of the things that really sold me on this guitar. Now, the things I wasn't sure I was going to like that might have been too weird for me is firstly the angled bridge humbucker. And whenever I see an angled humbucker like this, it just screams multi-scale length metal guitar to me, which is not my world at all. So I wasn't sure about that. But also the sort of upper horn of the guitar here has been carved out of the swamp ash and it's kind of solid up here and I was worried that might restrict upper fretboard access but as it turns out it's perfectly shaped to the contours of your hand so you can grip this thing like a baseball bat and do some really <coughs> meaty bends and if anything you get more control over your playing than you do on a standard guitar so I didn't need to worry about that but it's certainly quirky and different right now one thing that was really interesting to me about it was the pickups in here. Now, these were commissioned especially by Nathan and built by Bare Knuckle Pickups. Again, fairly local to me, just down the road. So we're keeping it local, even with the electronics. And what these are, are a set of pickups that I don't know if Bare Knuckle named them or Nathan named them or what, or maybe both of them. They became known as the Knuckle Dusters. And essentially what they are is Bare Knuckle make a set of Telecaster pickups called the Brown Sugars. mid bitey kind of Keith Richards, raunchy rock and roll telly pickups. And these are two of them wired together in series, but with the second coil reverse wind reverse polarity. So it acts as a humbucker and they're designed to work with push pull coil split pots. So with them down, you get both coils together and with them up, you get essentially a Telecaster, just two single coil pickups. So you have the sound of a Tele and a Les Paul in one instrument and many different combinations of the middle position with one of them coil tap, but not the other, and all that sort of stuff. Now, the DC resistances of the individual coils of the brown sugar set, I did write this down. The bridge pickup was 7.5 and the neck pickup is 5.5. So kind of vintage spec pickups there in terms of their DC resistances. But when you wire them together, of course, it doubles that. So the bridge pickup was reading at just shy of 15K. Now, the first thing I actually noticed about the bridge pickup when I plugged it in and played it was it was wired wrong. Now, I don't know whether Bare Knuckle made the two pickups slightly differently to each other or whether it was a mistake or whatever. But Nathan's wiring in terms of the colours of the wire from the pickups were was dead on. But the second coil of the bridge pickup was wired out of phase to the first. So in the neck pickup, it was really meaty and lots of clarity. And you stuck it onto the bridge pickup and it was half the volume and really thin, quite sort of Peter Green mid position out of phase quack. So I emailed Bare Knuckle, asked for their opinion on it. And I just reversed two of the wires on the push pull pot and it was working as a sort of proper humbucker. So we I fixed that. But one thing that quickly became apparent about the bridge pickup was as a sort of general rule, when you up DC resistance, you start to lose high end. 
And 15K for me is astronomical. I live in the vintage world of like four to 8K in DC resistance. So it's double that. And the neck pickup was really defined, nice and thick, but nice. In coil split mode, which is how I was running the guitar most of the time, you've got a really nice twangy Telecaster sound. But as soon as the bridge pickup was humbucking and running at 15K, it was so muffled, it was unbelievable. It just had no high end compared to the rest of the guitar, which I was kind of expecting, but it was really extreme. It was like playing a Les Paul with the tone control rolled two thirds of the way off. There was just no treble there at all. It was really hot, so it was just booting the front end of the amp all the time, whether you wanted it to or not. And there was just no clarity there at all. So I knew I was gonna to have to do something about that. So I began to think about what I could change about the electronics of this guitar to make it more suited to me. Now, the last resort was going to be to change the pickups and just use some sort of vintage spec humbuckers, drop them in there. But especially with the angle of the bridge pickup, it was gonna to have to be custom made, which was gonna cost a fortune. And also these knuckle dusters are really synonymous with Nathan's guitars. I didn't wanna just take them out, but they weren't working for me. The bridge pickup wasn't especially. So I went back to the drawing board and I had a little look around online and I basically found a wiring mod for coil split pots that was at least popularized. I don't know if they actually came up with it, but it was kind of pushed by Lindy Fralin pickups or Fralin over in the States. And basically what it is, is wiring a 7K resistor when you pull the pot to split the coils. And what that does is in humbucker mode, you're getting both the coils working all the time. And when you split it, rather than just having one coil and the second coil completely dumped to earth, it lets a little bit of the second coil through. So you still get a single coil character, but the DC resistance is slightly more equivalent. The overall tone is slightly more equivalent and it just makes it a bit more usable by having a, a bit of that second coil coming in. So that got me thinking, if you can do that for the coil split mode, can you basically do it for the reverse? So up being just a single coil telly, but down just a single coil telly, but with a little bit of the second coil coming through. So I didn't want to spend any money if I could avoid it. So I, the only resistors I had here were some 15K resistors, way too high for that. So in the end, I just chained three of them together and wired them in parallel to create a 5K resistor. So the best way of thinking about how this guitar is wired now is it's coil split in both positions on the push-pull pot. Up, you're getting just the outside coils there, so they're acting as true single coil tele pickups. And down, it's coil split, but you're getting a little bit of the second coil coming through. So I basically used a 5K resistor for the bridge and a 15K resistor on its own for the neck, because that didn't need too much adjusting compared to the bridge. Now, the real world effect of that is you, of course, have your single coil tele sound in coil split mode, but when it's in humbucking mode, but with a bit of that second coil coming through rather than all of it, it drops the DC resistance of the pickup. Now, I wrote this down as well. The bridge pickup was, was reading at 15K. It's now reading at 10.4. So we're only using, we're using less than 40% of that second coil in terms of its actual output. So we're having a single coil pickup with 40% of a second coil. So it beefs it up it ups the DC resistance, it ups the output, but nowhere near as much as it was before. And it's bringing it all down in line with the world I live in of kind of vintage spec pickups. So the neck pickup was reading at 11K and it's now reading at 9.5. So again, we're not adjusting that too much. I think we're letting kind of 70% of it through of that second coil, but it's just dropping the DC slightly. And to me, that has brought this guitar to life because whereas the concept before was Telecaster Les Paul. The Les Paul sound was like a very sort of modern, bloated, mid-range, no clarity Les Paul. Now you kind of have Tele and like PAF Les Paul, and that's my happy place. So all of a sudden, without really spending any money at all, that is what I've done to this guitar. So yes, it has a 15K bridge pickup, but we're only using 10.4K of it in humbucking mode, if that makes any sense. So I've adjusted the wiring. I put one of my VI pots for the tone pot and one of my posh Lux capacitors. That didn't really make any difference at all. It was just adding some posh stuff in there for the sake of it, really, because I had it lying around. But this guitar is now working for me and it's sounding like the sort of guitar 
I always want to play. So what I'm going to do today, folks, is first and foremost in the playing, just show you the, I think it's eight different combinations. because You can have the bridge pickup, coil split or not, the neck pickup, coil split or not. And then in the middle position, neither coil split, just one of them coil split or both coil split. I think that's eight different combinations. So I'll show you those and then I'm going to plug it into my big pedal board, into my Dr. ZZ Rec and just get some different sounds going on to show you what it's capable of. It has a lovely sort of sizzly high end and it just sounds like a hot Telecaster and I'm absolutely loving everything about it now. So I cannot wait for you to hear it today. So without further ado, folks, let's rock. <laughs>
folks now please do comment underneath let me know what you thought of this guitar today i love chatting nerdy guitar stuff with you folks down in the comment section but i'm just loving everything about this guitar at the moment it's still early days it only arrived at the end of last week so i'm still really getting to know it and bond with it so sorry for the sloppy playing today i'm still kind of it's still quite an alien experience for me playing a guitar this shape and size I love how it looks, which has really surprised me because it's not one of those classic shapes, but it doesn't look weird to me, especially now. I love the woods on it. I love the premium workmanship on it. And yes, I had to adjust the DC resistance of the super hot bridge humbucker to really make it work for me. But now I'm just loving how it sounds. In coil split mode, which is the first coil split I've ever played that I've actually liked, you get an amazing twangy telly sound. In humbucking mode, you get the low mid range of a humbucker, you get the sizzly mid-range of like a P90 and the supreme clarity of like a low output vintage spec filtertron. So it can just do everything. Now, I don't anticipate myself playing around too much with all the coil splits and the various combinations, but it's nice to have them. I'm actually enjoying playing around with all the push-pull pots, which is a real first for me. But I I'm just blown away by this thing. I'm absolutely loving it. So please do comment underneath, folks. I love getting your thoughts and opinions underneath all these videos. But for now, thank you ever so much for watching. Please do hit subscribe. I know I always say it, but it makes a big difference when you do that. I'm going to be using this guitar a lot more for demos on the channel because it's just such a versatile instrument. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.